So you would like to write software that processes sound. And for this, you need a programming language. But there are so many of them out there. Which one to choose? That's why in this video, I'm going to discuss my personal top five programming languages for audio programming. Hi everyone, this is Jan Wilczek from dwolfsound.com and if you're new to this channel, here you can learn how to process sound using self-written software. And of course, we need some programming language to write software. So taking into account my experience during studying, research, industry career, tutorials, prototyping and all that, I decided to come up with a list of top five programming languages that you should use if you would like to get a job in the audio programming industry or you would like to pursue your hobbies. So before we jump into the list of five programming languages, I would like to mention some honorable or dishonorable mentions in the sense that these are the languages that are known to me and I'd like to explain why aren't they in the top five. So the first honorable or dishonorable mention is MATLAB. MATLAB is a huge programming environment created by MathWorks that is largely popular in academia. So if you go to university studying audio programming, you are likely to use MATLAB and it's for a good reason. So it's very powerful environment. You can do a lot of things very fast. The visualization is great. All the helper functions, prototyping is very fast. But the main problem with MATLAB is that it's crazy expensive. It's, <laughs> it's so expensive that basically as an individual, I mean, I don't see a way how you could, you would be able to use MATLAB nor even at a moderate sized company because it's frankly so expensive and often even if you have a MATLAB license and you want to share it with someone the other person doesn't have the license so because of this limitation I wouldn't advise choosing this language actually I have quite a good alternative in my top five list the next honorable mention is max MSP so I must admit out of the box that I don't have so much experience with, with Max MSP and mainly that's why it's not in the top five. Also, again, uh, it needs a license. It needs a license, uh, but if you can afford it and you think it's worth it, then go for it. It's simply not for me. The next one on this list is our languages like Zig, Nim, or maybe some other language that I don't know that have come up in the last years. So it must be said that new languages sprout everywhere now. And I prefer stable, widely used languages that are well supported, have their package managers, etc. So Zignim, maybe they are super fast and maybe there's something amazing about them. I just haven't seen them widely adopted in the industry. And uh, for example, in the, the audio developers conference last year, no one talked about them. So maybe that's a good reason why you shouldn't use them as well. Another honorable mention here, and that's one that I'm really curious to see when it goes in the future years, is JavaScript, or you can also generalize it to maybe TypeScript, TypeScript as well. And uh, this is something to look out for. Probably in the coming years, the web audio community will grow exponentially, but I don't know. If you have watched my recent interview or listened to my recent interview with Christoph Gutandin, who is a web audio developer, you learned how many amazing things you can do in the browser with audio. And as Chris said, it's so easy to share a link with someone. So it's really amazing what will be possible in the future. But right now, I just don't feel that we're in that spot right now. But who knows, maybe it's soon to come. And the last one, that's an honorable mention, is the C major programming language. So it was announced last year during the Audio Developers Conference by Soundstax. It's a new programming language dedicated to prototyping audio plugins, DSP stuff. I also haven't used it extensively and also I haven't heard about people using it. Maybe there are some tutorials on the internet and if you find it interesting, of course, check it out. I just maybe I just feel that maybe we need to wait a few years be before 
it's so widely adopted. I don't know. So with this out of the way, here are now my top five languages that I believe are great for audio programming. And number five is pure data. Uh, sometimes pure data is described as max MSP for poor people. I disagree with it. I had a great pleasure of meeting the creator of pure data that was later licensed to become also max MSP. What's great about pure data is that it's free, but also it's so widely used. I mean, by sound designer, composers, and um, also a lot of industry books explain DSP topics using pure data. So I really believe it's highly beneficial to learn this language. I experimented with it a bit, uh, but I plan to learn more and more, maybe even make some tutorials on the YouTube channel. What's great about Pure Data is that there are so many resources on it available, not just books, but a huge number of YouTube videos where people do crazy stuff, basically use Pure Data as Lego bricks. So I imagine it must be a lot of fun. Of course, visually, it's maybe not as attractive as, as Max MSP, but nevertheless, it's completely free and it seems crazy powerful. Okay, number four on this list is Rust. And Rust is a language that's, again, very popular in the programming community in general, but I see it also adopted more and more in the DSP community, and for a good reason. It's really designed in a way to ensure memory safety. And in my opinion, it simply has so much great defaults. You have naming convention as a default. You have constness as a default. You are required to handle all exceptional cases. You have a package manager and you have uh, already a linter that ships with it. So there are so many amazing things that you get as out of the box as a default that I really think that it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful language and I know programming enthusiasts out there who use it all the time. I just maybe don't see as many job postings using Rust for audio, but I know that there are some jobs. I have friends who actually worked in uh, Rust audio and even on the Rust Discord, you have Rust audio channel. So it's definitely something to check out. Uh, if you're just starting out, it may be a good choice for you. But the problem, of course, is that it's quite a new language, so there's not so much code written in it. In contrast to number three on this list, which is the C programming language. And of course, in C, you have lots and lots of code. For example, pure data, which was number five, is also written in C. So C is so widespread that it's maybe really beneficial to learn this language, but of course it has its disadvantage, disadvantages, it has its drawbacks, it has a negative sides, but it's simply ubiquitous. And I believe if you know C, uh, it should be quite easy for you to find an audio related jobs, especially related to embedded software where you cannot maybe use some fancy compilers or fancy languages. So definitely C is still holds strong. I don't know, I don't know the future how it will be, but uh, the amount of code written in C for audio is so huge that I doubt that it will go away soon, likely. Okay, number two, and my favorite language for prototyping is Python. I love Python. I mean, the syntax is great. You have a package manager. Prototyping is super, super easy. You can do anything you would imagine. Uh, it's, for example, it's much easier, and in my opinion, it's much easier and faster than in MATLAB. So MATLAB takes quite a long time to launch. Python is very fast. You can use it with any IDE. And it's simply so enjoyable to be able to write a few lines of code and create a powerful effect. So I use Python all the time for prototyping, for understanding, uh, various various audio algorithms but also for creating figures for creating plots for creating diagrams related to dsp and it's just such a versatile language i have a friend uh, who is actually doing audio programming only in python 
but with Python, he's able to write uh, microservices. He's able to write whole websites. He's able to write desktop apps. And it's so incredible. He's able to write audio renderers. So it's so incredible how much you can do with Python. Of course, it's only downside is its optimality and uh, everything that's related to threading because of the global interpreter lock. So if you're looking for something performant, then maybe Python is not the best option. But for single scripts, understanding all your algorithms and especially prototyping, it's, it's simply, simply amazing. I love Python. And number one, it's of course, we all seen it coming, it's C++. The C++ programming language is so ubiquitous in the audio community that it's hard to find a project that's not using C++ in one way or another. If I understand it correctly, it can also be uh, used on embedded devices provided the proper cross-compiler is available. But in general, every audio plugin that I see is written in C++. You have the juicy plus plus frameworks which, which makes writing audio plugins even simpler the community of c plus plus is huge there are so many resources on it and uh, there are so many job openings it's in the year-to-year -year surveys i think uh, apart from the I, I think it's always the most popular language that doesn't use a virtual machine so typically the first one is you know javascript typescript then you get of course python and, and c sharp and java but then comes always c plus plus and it's really amazing uh how fine-grained this language is and you can do everything with it you can do basically everything a lot of things are more difficult than, for example, in Python or managed languages. But uh, I guess that sky is the limit. And when it comes to real-time performance and optimization, I, I don't know if there is any other compiler that's as fast. Of course, I may be wrong, but uh, so much engineering that went into creating those C++ compilers it's simply hard to now uh, take it over. So C++ thing seems to be a language that was popular, is popular and will be popular. Even simply taking the amount of code that has already been written in C++, how much money and effort was put into developing the compilers. And finally, because of the, or thanks to the advances of the C++ standard. What we've seen in C++ 2023 is simply amazing. And uh, I really hope that with time, we'll be able to make C++, to have C++ safer, easier to use, more understandable. I know that Herb Sutter has his CPP front or CPP2 syntax that's using again the good defaults but we already have c++ package managers we have quite established tools like cmake visual studio xcode etc and c++ also you know is compatible with c so there's another huge area of code that you can reuse thanks to c++ and also c++ is used for programming every operating system out there and for example, even on Android, on iOS, you can interact with C++ and use audio thanks to C++. So basically everywhere I look in the audio landscape, I see C++ and I really like this language. Sometimes it's annoying because writing stuff takes more time than I would like to, but in general, it's a great language. And if you consider learning just one language for audio programming and you would like to do anything that has to do with real time, then C++ is your safest bet. If you don't have to use real time, then probably Python is fine for you because you also get all these deep learning fancy features. But if you want to do anything with real time and audio, I think C++ should be your number one choice. Okay, so that was my list. What are your top languages for audio programming? Let me know in the comments down below. And 
Of course, don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on notifications. If you'd like to see this list in a written form, then head over to thewolfsound.com. The link is in the description. And of course, if you would like to know what to learn from C++ specifically, you can find it on my audio plugin developer checklist, which you can get at thewolfsound.com slash checklist. That was all from me. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Take care.